Hello everyone, I'm Rachel227. Welcome to my dual gap eco tutorial. In the last episode, we talked about the build order in the T1 stage. Now we have upgraded all maxes to T2. And the next step to build up eco is to upgrade them to T3 maxes, fully circled by mass storages, and also get a resource allocation system and even an ARAS on your ACU. But what is the most efficient build order to do all these things? How much energy is needed to do this? We will talk about these questions in this episode. If you are not familiar with the basic eco math of Forged Alliance, you can refer to Heaven's generic eco tutorial first. Before deciding which step to take first, let's first talk about how to upgrade T2 maxes to T3 correctly. Now we have four groups of maxes. Each group has two T2 maxes and one mass storage between them. We can get them fully upgraded and buffed in two ways. First, we circle each max with a ring of mass storages, and then upgrade them one by one to T3. We have calculated in the last episode that each mass storage takes 267 seconds to pay back. A T3 max takes 4,600 mass to build, yielding 27 mass per second when it's adjacent to four mass storages while a fully buffed T2 max yields 9 mass per second. So upgrading each T2 max to T3 pays back in 256 seconds, which is quite similar to 267 seconds. Alternatively, you may find that 256 is less than 267, so we can circle a T2 max and then immediately upgrade it to T3. Repeat this circle upgrade process seven times. This is theoretically more efficient, but the difference is negligible in practice. Both approaches are good for most maps, like Saturn's Clutch. However, there is an even better way in dual gap. When your core maxes are very closely located in your base, there is an important fact that the price of upgrading a T2 max to T3 is the same as building a T3 max from scratch, so you can reclaim your T2 max to get 729 free mass, and then build a T3 max from scratch as quickly as possible, together with a ring of mass storages. In this way, the total investment of one max is 4,600 minus 729 from reclaims plus 200 times 3 for mass storages equals 4,471 mass, and the mass production increases from 6.75 mass per second to 27 mass per second. The payback time of each unit is only 221 seconds, far more efficient than both approaches mentioned before. However, we do need more preparations to build T3 maxes like this. First, we need access to T3 tech. Otherwise, we cannot build a T3 max from scratch. Second, there is a gap between the suicide of the T2 max and the completion of the T3 max. During this period, no mass is yielded from this mass point. We hope to make reclaiming and building as quick as possible, so we need lots of build power. Third, because we hope to make it quick, the peak energy usage will be high. Then we also need a decent amount of energy generation and energy storage. The T2 stage of eco, in my opinion, is to get everything ready for building T3 maxes like this. The first thing to do when you have T2 tech is to build a T2 power generator and several T2 engineers. We only need five T2 engineers. You may find it too difficult to keep your energy level balanced when you have T2 power so we also build two energy storages. Then there is probably one of the most important divergences in build orders. Different people follow different build orders from here. The choice depends on your strategy, your faction, and your teammates. Let's talk about them one by one. The first choice is T3 factory rush. After building the second T2 pigeon, go straight to the T3 land HQ, because you may not have enough energy for a T3 air HQ. This build order is very aggressive. It hurts your eco because a T3 land HQ is more expensive than a T3 mass extractor. However, 
it is the fastest way to get T3 tech, together with lots of build power from T3 engineers. Guess what this build order T3 factory rush is used for? Yes, for rushing a nuke. We will talk about the nuke rush build order in the future. There is also another rare case where we have to do a T3 factory rush when there are no UEFs, no cybers in your team. In this case, the only way we can get enough build order is to build T3 engineers. I would rather prevent this from happening by picking cyber myself before the game starts. If we are not upgrading the T2 HQ to a T3 HQ, we can reclaim the T2 HQ and get approximately 1000 mass. Then we suddenly have too much mass, so we can upgrade one of the T2 max to T3 with a ring of mass storages in an old-fashioned way. Then we are probably running out of energy again, and we build another T2 pigeon. Note that it is the timing for an early T3 strategic bomber rush from the enemy air player, so we also build shields to cover all core maxes. We need two shields for Aeon or Cybrid, but only one shield for UEF and Seraphine. Next, there are two popular options. The first one is called Rest First, applicable to most factions, but works best with Aeon or Seraphine because they have ARAS. The second one is called T3 first, which only works well for Cybrid. Let's first talk about RAS first. Build another one or two T2 pigeons, and then upgrade RAS followed by ARAS if available. Because building RAS and ARAS are extremely energy consuming, we need to keep our energy level balanced by microing engineers to assist ACU properly. An energy star not only hurts mass production, but also disables shields for a few seconds. Also, RAS and ARAS produce lots of energy per second, so it is the best timing to spam energy storages. I built 30 energy storages in each game, but you'll need more if you plan to build a Yolona OS later. RAS and ARAS provide enough energy. For build power, get a T2 Cyber Engineer from teammates and build 3 fully upgraded hives after finishing ARAS. Finally, upgrade the commander's T3 engineering suite quickly, and we are then fully prepared for the T3 max upgrades. The reference timing for RAS is around 10 minutes and ARAS around 11 minutes. The timing will be earlier if teammates overflow or give energy to us. There is an alternative build order, T3 first. After building the second T2 pigeon and shields, immediately start upgrading the commander to T3. In the meantime, there will be some extra mass, so we can upgrade another max to T3 in an old-fashioned way and circle it with mass storages. Don't forget to build three fully upgraded hives too. After the T3 engineering suite on the commander is finished, we still don't have enough energy production for efficient T3 max upgrades, so we need a T3 power generator. You may wonder why these two build orders work, and which one of them is better. First, why RAS? The reason why we prioritize RAS and ARAS is that they are efficient. Take Aeon as an example. Each level of RAS takes 5,000 mass, 175,000 energy, and only 2,800 build time. However, it generates 18 mass and 1,700 energy per second. It is approximately two-thirds of a fully buffed T3 max, plus two-thirds of a T3 pigeon. Compared with the latter combination, RAS is more expensive with respect to energy, a little bit cheaper with respect to mass, and needs way less build power. You don't need engineering stations to upgrade RAS or ARAS. Second, why the T3 first build order only works well for cyber? The reason is simple. We need to build hives about two minutes earlier than the rest first build order. If the cyber teammate on your team is not playing on air, his T2 engineers will either be unavailable or too far from you. And then you will get your T2 cyber engineer too late. Finally, let's compare rest first with T3 first. The outcome of them turns out to be quite similar. In a sandbox mode, the T3 first build order is a little bit more efficient with respect to mass income, 
because you can finish your T3 max upgrades earlier. However, in a real team game, the rest first build order sometimes works better. The shortcoming of the rest first build order is that you are short in energy before rest and a rest finish, and that you overflow energy after rest and a rest finish. Your teammates can make up for this shortcoming for you. They give you energy or overflow energy to you before you finish your rest, and the excess energy after you finish your rest and a rest will be overflowed back to your teammates. No energy gets wasted. If you watch replays of top eco players, you will find that most of them follow the rest first build order. There is another alternative when you play with your friends in the same team, and one of your friends is on the air position. Just request an early T3 engineer from him and skip the commander T3 upgrade. Some adjustments need to be made, and the resulting build order can be more efficient than other build orders. However, if you are playing with random guys on FAF, the air player will probably be unable or unwilling to give you a T3 engineer so early. In this episode, we talked about three options for the T2 stage, T3 factory rush, RAS first, and T3 first. The RAS first build order is the most widely used. Our following episodes will be based on the RAS first build order with Aeon or Seraphim where you have your RAS, ARAS, and the T3 tech ready, with one fully buffed T3 max and the three fully upgraded hives. Hope you didn't get confused, and see you in the next episode.